when you set it to run at a certain speed, that's what holds it is those weights keep it at a certain keep that plunger at a certain distance. It's kind of hard to explain how it works. So, you know, they don't have an oil pump. So they have all them globes. And it just, they adjust a little screw and then it like drips oil. Like, they just have that little they have like a screw in the top and it just drips a little thing of oil every once in a while to oil the shaft. So all them little glass globes are for oiling the machine. And it just, they adjust it so that it... That one, the small one? Yeah. So that, they just adjust that and it just drips once in a while and oils that shaft or whatever. So oil it. So it means I gotta pick up the slap. So and so someone when these engines were running there was always somebody that went around and That's kept oil? Yeah. And kept all kept everything up and kept the globes filled or the oilers filled. So there always had to be someone on duty to keep an eye on all those little things. When these when these started out new and they ran like this, they would run a hell of a lot of hours before they needed work if they were kept up. I don't know how many hours I wondered did they run before they had to start working on them. There's a lot, but okay. Uh, well, just like in today's world. It depends upon the guy that owns it. Oh, yeah. How much attention did he put or not? I mean, the one thing that's different with this versus the one in your car, your car's got a computer to watch things. Yeah. This didn't. You were the computer. Yeah, you had, like I said, you had to constantly be around it and make sure everything was lubricated well, and everything. They talk to you. Very subtle, but they do talk to you, so you pick up noises. It's up to you to learn what the noises mean to be able to respond to what it's saying. Yeah. Yeah. They run a long time because they don't run fast if you keep them oiled. Right. Those are well over Cool. And quiet. And quiet, yep. You see all the moving parts on the other side that control it on the other side of the room? So this thing has to run it at a very precise speed because it has to make 60 cycles of electricity so alternating current is 60 cycles so that engine is set at a specific speed to maintain 60 cycles. This thing has to be turning at a certain speed to maintain 60 cycles. So that engine runs at a very precision speed produce the electricity so it's got like um, see oh okay so right now it's only making like 32 cycles for whatever reason I don't know maybe back in the old days that's what they ran them at I don't know but in modern modern days they run 60 so the engine speed affects the cycles because the faster that's turning. I don't know, maybe back in the day they never relied on 60 cycles, I don't know. But And they might just be running it slow because it's a demonstration.
they may not be running it at 60 because it's, you know, it ain't like they're running stuff that requires it. See, look at the guys always going around oiling it. And he's working the oil into the shaft there on the governor. He's moving the governor up and down to get the oil work down on the shaft. With that rod coming from the governor and these drop latches control the speed of the engine firing. Amazing, huh? What were these engines? I mean, how did they rate them for their horsepower? This is rated uh, 385 horse. That's that's a lot. At uh, 90 RPM, which is 22,000 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> so. Back when these engines were running and they were it was like a generator plant, were yeah, I mean, did they actually in the day we had stuff that relied it being on 60 cycles, right? Yeah, this ran at 60 cycles. Yeah, because it's running about half speed right now, according to that. It's at about 30 cycle now. We run about half rate of speed. That's enough to light up these lights to a dull glow. Uh, 90 RPM things are flying around so fast it's hard to see what's happening. Oh yeah, it's a little noisier in here too. Yeah, we don't want to, the little windings are 120 years old, we don't want to stress them, so we can only put 150 volts on yeah. instead of 220. Yeah, so yeah, it's technically running at half speed to what it would be in a real it's generator. Ran an entire plant. Oh, this came from a manufacturing yeah. facility? St. Paul, Minnesota, William Box and Lumber. There's some pictures of the wall over there about them. Uh, so this part their entire plant from 1904 to 1958. 1904 to 1958 yeah, it run? Only source of power. They finally had to go on commercial power and the plant kept getting bigger and bigger. Just couldn't keep up anymore. But this was for manufacturing facility. Yeah, that's what this was, yeah. Yeah. It generated three phase power. Because at the time in St. Paul, you know, 19, 19 and 19 4, if you wanted to power your plant, there was nobody who could sell you enough electricity. The only power companies around at the time serviced like eight or ten blocks to give each house 50 